If you ask me what my first weapon was that I ever tried in Monster Hunter, and I'm talking about my very first weapon in my history of playing Monster Hunter, it would be the Insect Glaive. I'm a fan of staff weapons in pretty much any RPG that you can think of. But beyond that, I saw how mobile it was, and of course its high flying potential was definitely a fun addition. And we haven't even gotten to the Kinsect. I'm also a fan of pet classes, and that's about as close as you're going to get in Iceborne. The Insect Glaive gives you so much potential for burst damage, and gives you a straight and narrow path to hitting and running before the monster even knows what happened. The newest fight, Arc Tempered Valkana, really gave me insight into just how mobile it can be, and how much that stayed true in Iceborne. Don't think that this weapon is down and out if you clip its wings though. In fact, it's even more dangerous on the ground. It may not seem as fun, but I can assure you it holds its own with its damage. If you still don't believe me and don't realize just how amazing this weapon is, let me break it down and tell you why I love the Insect Glaive. So to start off, I'll give you an example of a build that I've used recently. Now this build isn't optimal and surely could be improved, but it's gotten me by easily. As far as raw element status goes, use whatever you want. If you have a monster with juicy hit zones for element, get that 3 star weakness and go for it. But in my experience, the difference in damage just didn't seem exorbitant enough for me to really crack down on what glaive I used. For this build we're using the Fatalis Insect Glaive because I worked hard to get those fatty weapons and damn it, I'm gonna use it. The first thing I want to call to attention in this build is the fact that we have 3 levels of flinch free and 2 levels of earplugs. When you have flinch free at level 3, gathering all 3 kinsec buffs, red, white, and orange, will give you 3 levels of earplugs, tremor resistance, and wind resistance. Now to be clear, this is only the case when you have all 3 buffs active. After that we have some of the usuals, crit eye, weakness exploit, crit boost, and agitator. Defensively we're going with stun resistance at level 3, a maxed out evade window, as well as a maxed out divine blessing. Free meal is a bit of a crutch that I was using to get back into the groove of insect glaive, but at this point, I would replace that with power prolonger for sure. A little bit of constitution in there to save up some stamina while we're dashing around in the air. The Shaver Jewel has become an absolute must for me just because of the amount of time it saves you, not having to tenderize a spot twice, and the ease that you get slinger ammo to power up your beautiful kinsect for longer periods of time. I threw an airborne mainly just for S's and G's because if you're looking to do solid damage, you actually want to stay on the ground for that. The kinsect I use the most is the Folia Cath 3 4s. Why? Because speed. I probably I prioritize speed over everything when it comes to my Kinsec because if you're not first, you're last. It also gives us some extra sever damage to try and snipe off those monster tails. The blast dust effect also happens to be the best in my opinion by giving us a nice solid boost to our DPS pretty consistently with the amount of times that we can get it to proc. Whether you've actually gotten your hands on the glaive or you've just been in a hunt with someone using it, you know that this weapon truly excels at being a high flying, mount building banshee. It's awesome having the ability to soar through the air, doing damage every bit of the way for so many reasons. One of my favorite reasons is the fact that you have such an arsenal of repositioning techniques while you're in the air. A lot of people think you should just vault every second you can and spam that mid-air combo to try and stay in the air 100% of the time. This isn't the case though. If you just flail about in the air, you're missing out on a lot of the potential, along with the potential fun, of the weapon. There's two main reasons I go into the air with the Insect Glaive. I either want to build up a mount so my people can do some burst DPS, or I'm maneuvering to get in place to do some solid damage. The move you pull off while in midair with B on Xbox or Circle on PS4 can really help you to close gaps and maneuver to a more safe and secure landing if you're going to use it to your advantage. Combining that with the midair dash available to you can see you cover a solid bit of ground or even dodge one of the few attacks the monster has that will snipe you out of the sky. So I've been focusing a bit more on the mobility of the airborne insect glaive, but the damage definitely isn't anything to scoff at, especially in a multiplayer setting. If the monster is focused on another player, you can bounce around on them like a trampoline if that's what you choose to do, building up those mounts the whole time as well. If you've watched any of my live streams, you can tell the pure joy that I get from vertically dodging a monster's attack that another weapon might have to swan dive away from. Harking back to AT Valkana, there are so many attacks that now become either a much larger opportunity for punishment or open up a window that would be closed for other weapons. Whether you're talking about the straight sweeping ice blast or the attack where she's in the air, and blast down rings of ice, 100% of the time you have beautiful windows for punishment with just a single vault. Now when we talk about Iceborne, we all know that tenderizing is the name of the game. Well, 
By using the Insect Glaive, you have another move that can get you to softening the exact monster parts you're targeting. From the air, you can drop down with your claw and hand and actually attach to the monster with your weapon, ready in hand to tenderize. This in itself can be extremely fun, much akin to the Sword and Shield Claw Yukin. It's just so gratifying to see a monster flying in the air, thinking it has some kind of advantage over you, and smacking it back into reality over and over. Don't get me wrong, I know the bow guns and bows are just as capable, if not more, and that some weapons have reach, but when we talk about melee weapons, there's just nothing that comes close to the ease which Aerial Insect Glaive battles in the sky. So the first misconception we need to get out of the way is that when you're playing Insect Glaive, you don't need to be high flying 24-7. But if we're being honest, having that versatility is absolutely something we'll welcome. You actually do your best damage on the ground, looping through your combo. You still have some great ways of maneuvering and the attacks, particularly at the end, can still help you to close the distance from a monster or let you keep a little breathing room while doing some damage. Now, this is the part of the video where I implore you, if you have some extra room in your build and you can squeeze in Evade Extender, do it. You're not going to see the clear benefits in the air, but man, will you see them on the ground. Most people that use the Insect Glaive know that collecting buffs for your Kinsect can be a little annoying at times, trying to get to the right spot on the monster, especially some of the more energetic and jumpy ones. Toss in some Evade Extender and you won't stress it ever again. You can get the best out of the Insect Glaive by getting a good balance between the Aerial Assault and the ground combat. Using things like the Dive Bomb to get some solid damage on the drop and then going directly into your ground combo will net you some solid DPS and a mark for your Kinsec to chase to and drill through the monster to get there. You can get quite a few hits in if you have the proper relation between yourself and your Kinsec when you do it. Whether you want to stick to the skies or keep yourself grounded, the Insect Glaive offers ample opportunity with each, but you're best off if you find that perfect yin yang between the two. When you use the Insect Glaive, you actually get to play a game inside a game. Think of it kind of like a mini game. If you've watched me playing Insect Glaive on live streams, you know that finding what monster parts give each buff to my Kinsect is a pretty fun journey every time. You have a pretty steady idea of what part gives each buff on a broad level, but there's plenty of nuances that break from the mold as well. Typically, you can be pretty safe in saying that the head will give you red, the wings will give you white, or wait, is it orange? No, the legs are orange, but but not on Zenogur, then isn't the back orange sometimes? Yeah, so maybe there isn't exactly a foolproof theory that you can go into with each hunt. As frustrating as it may sound, you really do get a cool little minigame-esque experience hunting for the right zone to hit for each buff, and then with so many different ways of marking the spot for your Kinsec to hit, you get to have a blast painting the monster with bullseyes and watching your Kinsec rush into war. Speaking of those little buggers, let's take a little deeper dive into them. My love for pet classes goes way back. I'm talking back to the Diablo 2 days, where you could have an army of undead or an army of nature's most fearsome fighters. It's a great feeling knowing that you have the potential with your weapon, but you also have a companion ready to lend its talents and abilities. So technically everyone gets to experience this in world, regardless of what weapon you use with Palicos. But only one class gets an entire extra companion in the form of an adorable Kinsect. And there's a lot more to these guys than just collecting buffs and smashing into monsters. But you know, first we'll start there. It's such a great feeling to send your Kinsect out and have it stagger a monster, whether it's on the ground or in the air, but you want to know what feels even better? Sending your Kinsect out and it absolutely topples the monster for a KO. Yep, you heard that right. Oh, even better than that, you ask? How about sending your Kinsect out and it slicing straight through a monster's tail? Yeah, that's right. A Kinsect can do both. Okay, they can't do both at the same time in the same hunt, but let me explain real quick. You know how certain weapons do bludgeoning damage and some do slashing? Wait, I'm sorry, I got D&D &D on the brain. But you know how some weapons do blunt damage and others do severing damage? Your Kinsec does the same. Depending on what Kinsec you choose, there's an abundance of difference between them, but for now we're talking straight up blunt versus sever. It's simple. You pick a Kinsec that does blunt damage and you'll be able to KO a monster with it, especially if you shoot your little paintball right smack dab on the monster's face and have your Kinsec smashing into its head repeatedly. You could also take the sever approach, mark the monster's tail, and let your Kinsec go till the wings fall off, or the monster's tail. From there, you can even get more tailored to your hunt by giving them a specific element type. I myself don't go this in depth, but you can absolutely do that with ease. I like to focus more on the type of dust they leave behind on their hits. You can decide if you want poison, paralysis, healing, 
or even blast dust left behind for you to trigger. I like to go more toward the poison or blast dust just because of how potent they can be and nudge you in the right direction when it comes to DPS. In saying that, I absolutely don't mind running paralysis either, but when we talk about the healing dust, I would much rather go for something that's going to give more damage or the opportunity for more damage. That's not to say that you can't run the healing dust and still efficiently take out a monster. It's still fun over everything when it comes down to these hunts. Play the way you want to play. I really wish they would have a sleep dust option because I love to use sleep status regardless of how inefficient it might be. From there, you have to decide what is most important to you between damage, healing, and the speed of your kinsect. Each kinsect has a different level in the three categories, and it's up to you to find the balance that you would like to bring to the hunt. For myself, it's speed, speed, and then speed. Don't get me wrong, damage is cool, increased healing is cool, but for me, the value that you get from having a faster, more mobile kinsect outweighs the other two easily. Beyond the stats of the kinsect, there's the looks. This is Monster Hunter after all. Part of the fun is loving the way you look while you hunt, and that doesn't stop at your kinsect. Sadly, there isn't a layered system specifically for your kinsect, but if you want to use a sub-optimal kinsect because it looks cool on your arm, do it. Like I said, this is Monster Hunter after all. I mean, we know how high-flying and mobile the insect glaive can be. Moving through the air with ease and cutting through monsters attacks with sleek precision. But if you don't look good doing it, then what's it all really for? There's some pretty solid designs when it comes to the Insect Glaive. I know that in one of the recent live streams, I was talking about the Shara Ishvalda weapons and how much I enjoyed their aesthetic. They really were some of my favorite designs in multiple weapon categories for the longest time. In terms of the Insect Glaive, I absolutely stand with that same sentiment. Now, you guys know I love my cosmetic mods, and there are some very good Insect Glaive mods to help spice up your look. There's even a mod that you can change your Kinsect into little versions of some of the flying monsters in the game. But seriously, don't fret console players, you really do have some great looking weapons to choose from. This is one of the rare instances where I actually like the clunky, meaty look of the Glavinus and Joe weapons. Whether you want to go with a bulkier look, or more of a sleek, slim, and clean design, they got you covered. If I had to pick one that I thoroughly enjoy, it would have to be the Rajong family of insect glaives. The cudgel is just too unique not to love, and I'm always a fan of something that has a clean aesthetic to it. So something new that I wanted to try out in the Why I Love video series is to take to the Handy Tips Discord and ask some of the members why they love using a certain weapon. Pixel loves the fact that pole vaulting with the Insect Glaive gives you a whole new layer of movement and lets you avoid monsters' attacks. Neko tends to like the amount of repositioning that you have available that lets you beat up the monsters while dodging their attacks. Al is a fan of the Kinsect and all of the utility it can provide you, whether we're talking about element variety, inflicting statuses, or causing KOs and severing tails. Ark loves Insect Glaive because it hands out mounts like Oprah. Slam loves the infinite combo you can do on a downed monster, as well as the improvements Insect Glaive received in World and Iceborne. And just like him, I'm looking forward to playing it in Rise. Honestly, I could just show footage of my hunts against AT Valkana with some of the awesome subs and Discord members and leave it at that, playing extremely aggressive and barely getting touched. I like to complain about the hitboxes of moves, but in all reality, the times I did get hit, it was my fault. There's just too much potential for fun for a person to not, at the very least, give Insect Glaive a try. Even when you start to get into the numbers, Insect Glaive can still hit some pretty impressive heights. And when I say that, I mean both in the air, or if you decide to stay on the ground, where you can actually do some sick damage. But just having that capability to vault up into the air at any given moment makes Insect Glaive one of, if not the most, mobile weapons in the game. Attacks that you add to swan dive through now become attacks you can literally hurdle over and capitalize on a new window of punishment available. One of the most important strengths is that you can pretty much decide when you want to mount a monster. You can stop a monster from getting time in its aggravated state and give your team time to really open up the floodgates. It's a weapon with unique characteristics for sure, but one of the best parts is that you're going up against a flying monster, you can take the fight to them like no other melee weapon can. Even if you're the lazy hunting type, you can send out your good old buddy, old pal, the Kinsect, and let it beat up on the monster while it gives you buffs and spread status inducing dust all over the area for you to interact with and give yourself a DPS boost on the monster. Whether you go with healing, power, or speed, your Kinsect friend will be able to do great things for you, like knock out a monster, or completely sever its tail. Not to mention that you'll look sleek as hell while doing it. 
The layered options for the Insect Lave are definitely on the better end of the spectrum. You might not have much that's going to absolutely blow you away, but I honestly can't think of a design off the top of my head that I really didn't like. Whether you're hunting in a group or going at it solo, there's no doubt that it's ridiculously easy to have fun with this weapon, and you can make a monster look absolutely silly with the amount of whiffs it'll be throwing out there. But that's going to be the end for this one. If you haven't tried out the Insect Lave, I implore you to at least get a few hunts under your belt with it so you can get that high flying rush of wrecking a monster midair. If you liked the video, feel free to help me out by hitting that like button. Comment down below why you love the Insect Lave or what your thoughts are on the weapon. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Iceborne, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content. Streams, reviews, and more. Dudes forever, have a good night and happy hunting.